All right, one day left tomorrow, release of the Brotherhood of the Snake. Finally! This is tracks nine and 10. All right, Canna Business, song nine. Says it all right there in the title, Canna Business. What a business it is. This is a song that I kind of found a lot of riffs off a jam session that Alex and I had done in a hotel. Yeah, it was something that was appropriate. I mean, uh, you know, we've been traveling, touring, and went had to make our way through Colorado. And just seeing how lax people were and checking into a hotel and seeing the sign that the smoking tent is out back. And it was, it was such a cool thing, you know, to see where we're going, our society's going today. In the beginning, it starts off with the chord progression with kind of like a guitar line over it. I'm doing the guitar line. Alex was like following me with the chords. Those chords later became the chorus. But it was such an interesting thing, the can of business where it's going from the medical dispensaries to medical deliveries to the vapes on the market today to just all the products that are out there in the can of business. So it was appropriate thing to sing about on this one. The rest of it kind of later, like six months later, kind of came into form. I had that one piece that I liked that we had a, a jam session on. Um, which plays out through the song. The next part is another jam song that I had um, that wasn't this, it wasn't in this song, but together we put them together and it kind of worked together. I just hope that the rest of the country catches on as well. So this song, the intro, which is a chord progression with a melody over it, it also works for the chorus and it also works for the main lead section. Um, the rest of it is kind of just like this one riff that just keeps going. Um, you'll end up hearing it tomorrow. Um, but anyway, yeah, this one's a lot of fun. Um, it starts off solo-wise. I kind of bust out with the first solo with the wah. And it's more, the, more of a rhythmic kind of solo. And then Alex comes in and just shreds all over the place. And then I end the, the song with the wah again, but it's more of kind of like a, I don't know, I don't want to say bluesy, but it's got more, more wah, and it's awesome. The last song is the number game. Yep, you pull that number and you'll see what number you are in death row. This is the most thrashiest, craziest double bass song on the record. We saved the heaviest song for last, um, along with the um, lyrical content, which, yeah, is kind of crazy. I really, yeah, I think Chuck will tell you about that. Right, Chuck? Basically, uh, that song, uh, I wrote that one with uh, Steve Souza, and um, I was stuck on the chorus. I had that chorus, 14 days, 14 lives, was the first line I had that stuck in my head, and I kept repeating. And so when we were writing it, that hook just was like, something about that 14 days, 14 lives, so we decided, okay, well, let's let's keep that line and let's make that kind of like the setup for a 14 day killing spree. Let's take 14 days and every day someone pulls a number and your next victim has a, the number and it's uh, plays down to one in 14 days he kills one person every day. So the number game starts off with a very militant drum roll which has been done before in metal, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Dissection, bands like that have done it. and. It just really worked with this piece. I mean, it really is kind of a collaboration of all those bands I mentioned, but still sounding like Testament. Um, and then it goes into this, just this crazy fast, fast picking riff uh, where the drums follow with a galloping herd of a thousand horses just stomping you to death. And then of course the lyrics follow stomping you to death with the serial killer. So all together, it's just a killer song and it was just odd when we wrote the song and wrote the lyric, the length of the song was perfect to the 14 counting down to the one. Didn't have to lengthen it, shorten it, it was just perfect. So it was like, we were like, Zet, see how perfect that was, this song was meant to be, that this, this song, because it just worked out timing wise. It goes into this middle part that is very, very, very percussive. And what I mean by percussive is, it's where the guitars follow the drums precisely and it's a really cool part. I mean, at live, I can't wait. This is this is going to be the part where the crowd just goes mental. And as we down the 
count